Good morning. I was just getting my thoughts together and my cat abandoned me yesterday. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. May the Lord bless you today and may you not eat too much food. I'm on that eat less diet again. I went up to 155.2. That's what the, that scale that talks told me this morning. Sometimes I just want to shoot it, but I don't have a gun, so... Maybe I'll throw it out the door. No, I probably won't. I got to get it and keep it under 155. All right. So Bella is here with me this morning, and we're just having a blast. I've been watching Jared TV and his lovely wife, the Queen, talk and last night. But I didn't stay up. I had to play it this morning. I go to bed early. I went to bed at 7 o'clock. I'm 90, kiddos. And I got a comment today that says, and those stories really happened. Well, yes, sir, they really did. I was there. I'm going to tell you all today about, I was going to tell you about Kathy, my other twin. That had a pretty interesting love story. But I'm going to tell you about Mama and Papa. Buddies, number one, Mom and Dad. They were from La Follette, Tennessee, down there near Cherry Bottom. And, uh, Anyway, everybody knows where Cherry Bottom is, right? <laughs> no, they don't. And I found out. Don't you like this hat? I just have, I just love hats. But I don't wear them too much, except in church. Sometimes I do, because those lights are so bright, and they hurt my eyes. And the sun hurts my eyes. Tell you what, I'm going to take it off and just show you how this looks. I'm fixing my wig right now. All righty. We didn't get no snow, so I'm wearing white today. Anyway, back to number one's mom and dad. He was a coal miner for 32 years. And the coal mines fell in on him two different times because they dug, they had to wear the lamps, you know, on their head and dig with diggers, <laughs> some kind of spike somehow or other. They had to dig the coal out and Sometimes the, the ceiling would just collapse on him, and he got hurt really bad the last time, right before they moved up here to Indiana. And Mama Beard, bless her heart, number one, had a sister that was a disgrace to the family. And Mama was so embarrassed, and their name was ruined. She had two babies out of wedlock, a boy and a girl. And... The shame was so pitiful back in that day that she says, I am moving away from this. And she found her a house in Indiana. And they bought it sight unseen. And they moved. And so when they moved up here, away from that shame, don't you know she fathered them? The daughter did about a couple of years later which was quite disappointing to Mamma, but it worked out well in the long run. It really did. She was a good Christian. Mamma loved the Lord. I got a lot of stories I could tell you about my mother-in-law from Tennessee. She was a pistol. I just loved her. Papa, not so much. He got on my nerves. I just, but he was all right. I don't want to badmouth anybody, especially my children's grandfather, but he got hurt really bad and he couldn't work. So when I met number one, he was working in town in a, a bakery and uh, supporting them a lot. And they, they could hardly make it. And after I married Buddy, we used to take them groceries because they were on commodities and, and they didn't, if you know what commodities is, it's very little food, oatmeal, rice, cheese, beans, and it certainly ain't going to last anybody a month. So we would get them groceries, and they had another son that would take them groceries. But my brother Norman told me about the black lung thing, which I did not know about. Well, I investigated the black lung thing, and that was in the very beginning. Back in, in the early, let's see, I married in 1950 to number one, June the 30th, 1950. I've been married a lot, but I'm a heavy woman. Anyway, Black Lung was going to provide money for those that were really hurt. And so 
Papa never drove a car, never had a car, and we called him Papa. So I loaded him in the car because Buddy was working all the time, number one was. And I took him to the doctor, and I told him we're putting in for the black lung. And so they said, okay. So they took x-rays of his lungs, and they were bad because he had inhaled that stuff for years, 32 years, and he passed. He got the black lung money, and he got back pay. A miracle of God that Norman told us about. It was wonderful. They put, well, out there in Memphis where they lived, they, or, no, they were, had moved on into town some then. But by that time, she didn't have a bathroom. They had outside toilet. And she was able to get a washer and dryer. Talk about a happy mammal. She was a happy woman. And she could have some chickens because she could never afford to buy chickens. You have to buy them, you know, and proof that they're, you want to buy just females mainly, very, very few roosters because of, you want the hens, they lay eggs. And I tell you what, she fell so in love with her chickens that she wouldn't go back to Tennessee and visit because she couldn't leave her chickens. She's as bad as my Kim, who has got chickens. You know, the one with the, the bossy one with the long-legged chicken that, guards his Miss Gracie. The other day when she was over having dinner at our house, we had a bunch of people in Saturday, and she said, well, Mom, I gotta get home and put the chickens up. You gotta take care of the farm. Two acres. <laughs> I don't want no acres. Don't want no chickens. I get free eggs anyway. I'm blessed. So anyway, Mama and Papa moved up here, and then they got the black lung. They could have a better life. Mr. Government provided it, but do you think those mines would give anything to them? No. When we was on the evangelistic field, me and number one, we held quite a few revivals down in uh, coal country. And when we was at one church, it was a coal miner town. It just had houses in a row everywhere, and those coal miners came to the revival. And one of them said, we want to take you to the mines and show you what it's like, uh, you and your husband. So I said, okay. And you know what? It was kind of like the spring of the year. And the poke salad was this tall. Look, this tall, poke salad. Y'all know what poke salad is? It's a green that I cook. I got a special recipe for poke salad. I'll have to give it to you sometime. Anyway, I picked poke salad and made poke salad on the motor, on the trailer. It was the fifth wheel. We had our 45 foot fifth wheel then. And I picked that post salad and cooked it right on my trailer. Anyway, we went into, we went to that mine and they all greeted us. The miners was glad to have the evangelist and his wife come see that. I was a lot younger then. But we had to lay down on this flatbed thing like a wagon and you rolled back into the mine and it gave me claustrophobia. It was, and they're in there all the time and they lay and they, dig and dig and that's the way they were doing it and this one miner told me that was come to the revival he said you know we make a hundred dollars a day and that was big pay back then that's nothing now the fact is every time number one goes to buy something to fix something on one of his houses and he has houses he he fixes them up and sells them and rents them and he has a lot of fun with that and i god bless him i I'm not too interested in it that much. And when he gets to working on curtains, you can he puts curtains up in these houses he fixed. You know I change subjects suddenly. Follow me. He was just recently putting curtains up in this house that he bought one in back where I live, which belonged to my friend that was not a Christian for years. She was so mean. But you know what? He was doing curtains. i got to finish this. Then I'll tell you about Laurel. But anyway, he was working with curtains and curtains, and I do not get involved in his curtains. He has no curtain sense, in my opinion. And I told him, I said, I'm not helping you with curtains. If you don't do it my way, we don't do it. So yesterday I went up and walked through where he had put curtains and stuff. You know what? He did a darn good job. I like fell over. Best he's ever done. 
He always puts curtains in these houses because he's getting ready to either sell it or rent it. Whatever. I don't care what he does with them. I told him when I married him, I said, honey, I have enough funds to keep you up in case you go broke. So don't worry about whatever you do. And I don't worry about whatever he does because I get my insurance and my Social Security. How much do you need? I don't need no money. More, more money. I need money, but not a whole lot. You know, it don't take that much. It does nowadays, though, because like I say, he complains. Everything he wants to buy is, he said, you know, those loaves used to be $2.30, and now they're $5. That's right. And groceries, and I told him just recently, you know what? I got to have more grocery money because he gives me grocery money, and that's only his duty as a wonderful, sweet husband. So he raised it $100. That was good. Now I can buy all the eggnog I want. That stuff is expensive. Wow. It used to be about half the price it is now, too. <laughs> That's life. Oh, yeah. So I am getting so many nice compliments from you kind people. Jared, and I, somebody else called T-Bones. I tried to look up his... I couldn't look up his YouTube thing, but he featured me also. Bless his heart. I just love them people. Let's get the word out about Jesus because, honey, time is coming on to an end for me for sure. You know, we're in, we're in the sunset of life and enjoying it because one day at a time, that's what we have to do and trust the Lord. And that's what I do is I trust the Lord. I really do. I'm serious. Jesus has been my companion. The Holy Spirit is my companion. And he leads and guides and directs us in the path we should go. And I just want everybody to know Jesus. So just give your heart to Jesus. Tell him you're sorry for your sins. Truly repent. And he will hear you. He can hear you anywhere. Anywhere. And I praise the Lord for that because I pray for all y'all. May the Lord bless and keep you through this wonderful time. I was just telling number one this morning as we rode over to my house. It, McDonald's was shut down. Walmart was shut down. Everything's nearly shut down because of Jesus. Jesus is still powerful. i got a flat place right there. I can see myself when I do this, and I want to look as good for y'all as I can. You have to do that no matter what age you are. I always said... Make the best of it. Do the best you can with what you got. And I've always thought, if these guys that dress up like girls can look so good, we can too. And we're really girls. There is a difference. God made us different. And I'm thankful I'm a girl. I have enjoyed life. I had seven brothers and one sister, and one sister's gone, one brother's gone. And I miss them, especially my sister. God is good, so trust Him. Enjoy your Christmas with family and friends, and may the Lord bless you. I better shut this down. It's been fun. Thank you for your comments. And JT, J, Jared, <laughs> I don't know who JT, that's somebody that's been making comments, I think. I tell you, so many people have been making comments, and they're so pleasing. It's such a joy to read them that you do. You can listen. To, it's amazing. It's a miracle of God that I can talk and that many people can hear you. Can you believe it? Wow. I'm impressed. Well, I ought to be. I mean, I guess y'all are too. So have a wonderful day. And may you walk the walk that you need to walk to be pleasing to Jesus. Love you. Bye-bye.